Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I have another video on my uh, VFD tube uh, project, uh, my VFD clock. Um, this has been a long time coming, I'm, I worked on this circuit board a very long time ago. Semi-recently updated the software to get the real-time clock up and running. And as you can see, uh, the tube works. Uh, it's a beautiful color. It looks blue in, in the video here, but in real life it's sort of more of a greenish blue. Uh, sort of more greenish. Um, difficult to show up, but um, you can see definitely it looks beautiful. Uh, that is The brightness of that is adjustable via this uh, little potentiometer. It's a multi-turn pot. Right now I have it hooked up uh, to this USB port on my, my computer, my desktop. And it's running happily at um, below the, the required current, um, so it runs pretty efficiently. I'm using a uh, built-in uh, switching boost regulator um, that I, I designed and built in order to generate the relatively higher voltages. It goes up to 70 volts for this tube, and my uh, converter is capable of going well above that, so I just have to be careful when tuning that to, to keep it below so I don't damage the, um, the tube itself. Uh, I have three wires coming out here right now for setting the time. So I have hours and minutes, and then this is just ground. Um, so whenever you short one of them to ground, it'll increment the hours or the minutes. Um, right now I kind of have you know this end exposed, and uh, yeah, it sort of looks uh, not a bomb, but anyway, it's kind of hard to make things at homemade that, that don't look like they're uh, an explosive. Anyway, um, I designed 3D model this case. I recently learned how to use SolidWorks. I have a 3D printer, so I put the two together and I designed this uh, this stand, and it works out pretty well. Um, I start to calibrate my 3D printer a little bit. And some of the tolerances are off. I made a mistake, and I uh, did not account for the thinner end on, of the tube on this end. So I had to make another disc uh, with a smaller diameter uh, hole cut off and then just uh, super glue to the end here so that it fits. Um, you had to remove some of the extra material uh, for the tube on this end. Um, it was kind of a little bit too tight of a fit on the glass and I was afraid it was gonna break it or something so I just took some sandpaper, a pocket knife, and I whittled a little bit of material and I sanded it down. The, uh, the screw holes for the PCB mount uh, came out location-wise almost perfect. I mean, it fits like a glove. I'm a little worried about this tilting over. I did 3D print some feet uh, that can glue on the front and the back on both sides. Uh, that should help with stability, but actually this isn't too bad. It's not something like I'm going to constantly be moving or touching. So um, my idea is maybe get some uh, Perspex or some, um, some acrylic, um, some kind of clear plastic. I can make a box that is an envelope that fits almost perfectly. So. Um, it'll essentially be clear, um, protected from dust, all that. Um, other than that, yeah, it works perfectly. I just had to uh, drill some holes. I probably should have just modeled it and printed out with the pre-existing uh, holes, um, but not a big deal. I'll just drill some holes for the, uh, the input. I might actually just put a USB mini port or something on there so it plugs right into any phone charger. Um, I have to solder up a little uh, some buttons, some tack switches, I'll probably put them on the side here um, for setting the time. Actually, I could put them underneath the screen right here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I'm not going to set the time that often. I could just solder them straight to the board. I'm driving the filament on this guy directly off of, um, there we go, directly off of DC, uh, the 5 volts through a, um, a resistor um, to drop the current. But um, I've heard that's not so great for tubes. Uh, after a while, you'll get uh, migration um, of, I don't know if it's mercury or something inside, mercury vapor or something like that inside the tube. But apparently, the, uh, the constant voltage gradient will cause it to migrate. So one side will be brighter than the other. And that's not a good thing to uh, do to tubes. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of space here on the board. I need to... Um, make a H bridge. I'm just going to make a discrete H bridge or maybe if I can find a, a like a small chip that'll do it for me. Um, just have one extra output on my pick uh, tied to a timer to generate you know 60 hertz square wave something like that and then so I can drive it at least with a, a square wave um, current through the the filament so that'll at least be better. It'll 
the average net flow will be zero, so any migration or anything will be nullified essentially. I also had to replace this uh, this little battery. Uh, well, it's not a battery; it's a uh, super cap. I was using it to back up the real time clock, so if you unplug it, it would keep the memory. I don't know if this cap is. Uh, it might be a little bit old because after it lasts like an hour or two um, from unplugged, but it's kind of annoying if I don't leave this plugged in all the time. It's it's it'll lose the time, so I, I might as well just replace that um, because I pulled that from like a VCR or something like that. So God knows how old it is. And also another thing I want to add is another switch um, so I can turn on and off the display something like that or maybe even like have it based off of time so I can have a mode where if it's uh, sometime early morning it'll switch off the tube because chances are you're not going to be looking at it I want to maximize the life of the tube so that would be ideal um, yeah the way it works right now is that little dot is the indicator for AM PM and then hours minutes seconds obviously like any other clock and I have little da dashes there I might add some switches so I can change uh, whether the dashes are on or what or it's not really that big of a deal but that's it's very simple right now because the firmware is basically done um, on the screen you can see it looks like it's flickering there is a very slight high frequency flicker when you look at it with your eyes uh, in real life but it's basically if you're looking straight at it very hard to notice if you're looking off to the side you can see it a little bit easier in your peripheral vision but it's not nearly as bad as uh, what's showing up here on the camera just because the, the refresh rate on my cell phone camera isn't synchronized so it makes it look worse. But it's uh, pretty steady looking to the eye. I am multiplexing this display um, so there is a slight bit of flicker but I've minimized that by increasing the frequency beyond what most people should be able to see. Um, yeah, other than that, I have a uh, you know a few more features I want to add. I don't. I was thinking maybe it might be cool to add a uh, temperature sensor and then have a mode where this will tell you the uh, the ambient temperature. But that's not strictly necessary. A clock's more useful for me than that. Also, if I want to add an alarm, that would be pretty easy to do. Actually, I could easily fit a piezo buzzer on here and have another switch. So these two switches for hours and minutes setting for the time could also be used to set the alarm like if you hold an extra switch for the alarm and then press one of them, something like that. These are all future improvements, but basically as a clock, it's actually working now, uh, which I'm really excited for. Uh, it's been a couple of years coming. I mean, I put up my first video on this, I don't know, two, three years ago, it seems maybe. And finally, it's to the point where I can actually use this as a clock. Uh, well, once I solder these wires and uh, make you know, drill the hole for this jack, then it'll be a usable clock um, that's not too fragile. I do have to do something about this board hanging out, though. Uh, it's a little bit disconcerting. I did some some art artsy wire bending uh, to dead bug wire the uh, driver chip for the VFD on there. But other than that, she's looking beautiful. Uh, I'm very happy with the way this turned out. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm a little bit busy recently, but... Um, I'll try to get the details up on this. I've documented uh, most of the stuff. I've had to reverse engineer the tube. So I have the hand-drawn schematic documentation for that. I, I can put that up either on my website or just um, on some GitHub or something like that. I can put up the schematic for the board uh, when I get some time, which will be probably, I don't know. I, I'm busy with school right now, so probably within a month or two. Uh, no promises, though. Uh, but yeah, I'll definitely eventually get all this information up for people who want to do the same. Yeah, Originally, this was inspired by uh, Adafruit. They released a kit, something very similar to this, uh, called the Ice Tube, I think it was. It's a clock that uses the same exact display. Uh, they use an AVR microprocessor. Um, I'm using a PIC. Uh, other than that, pretty much the specifications between mine and theirs aren't going to be that different. Um, other than, you know... Mine's a custom design board. My software's all custom myself. I've written. Uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, beautiful clock. Uh, I just can stare at this for hours. And I love how it just runs off my computer's USB port. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've rambled on long enough. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can you know comment down below. Um, I've been making a lot of changes to my YouTube channel. Um, 
I've started Patreon. I've started uh, eBay affiliate program. And for everyone who's uh, been using those links, thank you so much. Um, I've already got uh, a little bit of uh, revenue from that. So you can look forward to me putting that forward into future videos for buying parts for projects like this or buying broken items to fix for a teardown tube or whatnot. Um, so yeah, thank everyone uh, for their support. Um, everyone's comments are you know, awesome. They always make my day uh, whenever I read uh, people's comments, questions, thoughts, um, ways to improve my videos, that kind of stuff. So thank you guys. Uh, you make my channel. Um, what it is you know today it's been you know a couple years since i put up my channel and i feel that we're we're gaining some steam here so that's awesome so anyway i've rambled on long enough thank you guys i will see you guys next time bye